Greetings and salutations. Welcome back. Apologies, I was going to do this video a little earlier in the week, but uh, yeah, a few things happened. But it actually worked out because I got to see the weigh in a little earlier on today. Gives me a bit of a better idea of how I think certain things are going to play out. That like my prediction was always the same, but certain things in the way in the weigh in have kind of helped me shape that a little bit more. So first thing we're going to talk about, Usyk coming in at 221, 221 and a quarter, AJ coming in at 240. Now, AJ came in at 240, but he weighed in basically fully clothed. Trainers, jogging bottoms, hat, I think he had his hat on as well, you know, the headphones. So he could actually be closer to 236, 237. And if that's the case, he's definitely coming in to move more. And he's, it would suggest that he is trying to train for stamina and efficiency that way. Trying to just make sure that, you know, the gas tank stays strong. Because that's always been a, an issue of his. So, how do I think this fight's going to go? Well, let's look at ranges, okay? So generally speaking, you'd think long range is where AJ is going to have the most success. But AJ is not a long range fighter. Never has been. He doesn't use the attributes of a long range opponent. AJ's best work comes from mid. Mid range is his sweet spot. His jab is the most effective from there. He seems to walk, he seems to go straight through a target. When it's uh when it's mid range, his right, straight right, the right hook, the left hook, and the right uppercut all seem to get the best extension on them when they're in that mid range territory. So long range, funny enough, even though Usyk's got the shorter um, the shorter wingspan and the shorter reach. He's actually better from the long range because he darts in and out, in and out of range a lot better than most heavyweights do just due to the feet and the footwork and the movement. Also, close range. Usyk's actually better up close in the pocket than AJ is. If you look at his fights in the WSB against Junior Farr, and Mihai Nistor, not counting the Joe Joyce one, everyone talks about the Joe Joyce fight, but those two in particular, you will see that on the inside, he's normally able to get in, kind of sit in the pocket a bit more on the inside, work to the body, manage to get quick shots off to the head before his opponent can land, and he'll either roll and rotate out of the out of the way of their shots or be able to take enough of their shots on the glove so even if he gets moved by it he hasn't taken anything fully from it he especially did that in the Joe Joyce fight towards sort of rounds I think it was three and four he stood in the pocket with Joyce even though Joyce is a lot slower but he stood in the pocket with him and literally traded and for the most part got the better of those exchanges at the time now, the Junior Far fight was a better one for me to watch than the Joyce one or any of his fights at heavyweight thus far. Not because Junior Far is on the level of AJ. He's not. Nowhere near. But comparatively, size-wise, at the time, height, reach, the dimensions, even the, the movement he exhibited was all more sort of reminiscent to the way how AJ would, would fight a fight. So... In that particular fight there, like Usyk was very cautious in the first round, just gauging to see what was coming back at him, how we could readjust, how we could move. And he started picking up the pace rounds two, three, four, and five, and was tagging far at will by the time the halfway through the third round came through. And that's only over five rounds. Now if you were to apply that same tactic and mindset to to a heavyweight over a 12 round fight it's a lot more plausible 
that he would land significant damage to either win conclusively or get a stoppage on an opponent. Now, I think AJ's best bet to win this fight would be literally to take center of the ring, not to be moved from it, tell Usyk to come to him and conserve his energy that way. Let Usyk make all the movement. Anytime he tries to move to the right, you adjust your legs over to the right, but you keep your feet planted. Pop that hard jab to the body. Pop it to the pop it to the stomach. Pop it to the chest. Even pop it to the shoulders to knock those back. Just keep Usyk from being able to set up the work he wants to set up. You impose your will on him and just make sure that he understands that this is no longer a boxing or a chess match. This is a dog fight. And I've got more dog than you. Now, AJ coming in at 240, normally his best weight is around sort of 242, 243. Now, if we again assume that the weight is actually lower than that because he did come in fully clothed on the scales, in the Andy Ruiz 2 fight, even though he landed a lot of good shots, they looked more like stinging shots as opposed to hard thudding clubbing shots that do excess damage you saw the one that split Andy Ruiz's eye but there was never any shots that he took in that fight where you thought oh he's hurt not like in the first fight where we took the left hook which obviously it was a flash knockdown but it did hurt him it sparked him and he was he was rocked for a while he admitted that you know that was probably the hardest he had been hit in his career at the time so sacrificing some of the natural strength and power for the speed and the stamina not sure if that's the right tactic against an Usyk who has been gradually coming up in weight over say the last three years but he's he's been he hasn't just piled on a bunch of pounds like in six months He's literally been putting on a little bit, a little bit since 2012, at the end of 2012. So, so we got 2018, so 2012, I'm thinking of the Olympics. Yeah, so he's naturally, he's been putting on just that little bit of size day by day, year by year. So he looks like he's walking around comfortably at that size. He looks like he's carrying that size and it's just enough where he hasn't, he hasn't lost his natural attributes but might even be increasing his punch power just a little bit. Now, Dave Allen, Derek Chisora and Joe Joyce have all actually said that he does hit quite hard and he's not sort of a, a feather-fisted puncher or not a, a guy that oh, needs to just accumulate damage. A lot of the time when people say, oh, he only accumulates damage uh, to, to get his opponents out, no, a lot of it he doesn't sit down on his shots because he's he's just making sure that they're accurate and they're tagging. He's not caring about the power until later on once he knows someone is drained to the point where they're not going to be able to counter as much. So I think at 220, it's a really good weight for him. And I'll be interested to see sort of how that ultimately works in his favour. Now get him to how I think this fight's going to go and the tactics each guy has got to employ to win. As I said, AJ needs to just stand firm in the centre of the ring and not be moved and make it a dog fight. Every time Usyk moves to the left, to the right, you just literally step to the side with him, cut him off and you keep that jab in his, keep that jab in his chest, keep it in his body, eventually go into the head, stepping on him, when you feel like you've got him trapped in a corner or trapped close enough to a corner that you can unload the big right hand or the uppercut that you love so much because at some point he's going to have to dip to try and roll under one shot so if he rolls under the jab you come up with the uppercut could be all he wrote right Usyk's best way to win well people say this is going to be a chess match right so Ultimately, Usyk's going to have to play chess differently to how people normally expect you to play chess. 
when you normally open a chess bout, what do you do? You normally will move one of your pawns one or two spaces, let the other person counter. They normally will do the same thing. Very rarely will you use a knight in your very first move or move one pawn to be able to get your rook out or move a pawn so that you can take your queen to the to the corner of the board just something random these aren't things that are just naturally done so once you do that it gets your opponent wondering wait what's happened there so neither Usyk or Joshua can afford to start the fight slow Usyk especially because if he starts it slow we're in the UK chances are Joshua will get the rubber the green if it, if a round is close we know who it's going to that's just facts it's not even conspiracy that's not outrage it's just it is what it is the champion is going to get the benefit of the doubt in the close rounds if the other person doesn't appear to be doing enough so I think Usyk is going to have to do a high um a high risk strategy of almost rushing Joshua the first two rounds making it like getting in sitting in the pocket at, at times jumping out of the kill box when he you know when it's too dangerous to enter in there and remain there but hit the body work the head the chin's not necessarily Josh, a Joshua issue people say he hasn't got a good chin his chin's actually very good it's his temple the ear and the nose that are his biggest problems so Usyk needs to try and target one of those one of those areas and almost just keep working away at it literally just chipping away chipping away round after round but I think he needs to move move on in the first two rounds make Joshua work more than Joshua wants to work start to drain that battery a lot quicker than we're used to it draining and then in those middle rounds where Joshua likes to sort of recharge the battery to get his second wind for the very late finish it's in that moment where Usyk needs to start applying more of the mental pressure as opposed to the physical pressure because once the battery's having to recharge it's going to slow down the reflexes for the for his men, for Joshua's mental agility anyway and that's where he can be able to start picking you know picking the deadly shots picking the the harder shots even sitting down a bit more on certain punches when he knows Joshua isn't going to have the reactions to either be able to counter it as quickly or to be able to move off the line also fainting is going to be a very um important tool for both men but watching the um Joshua versus Pulev fight back literally before I started recording this I noticed that Joshua was falling for a lot of Pulev's feints even the ones that he shouldn't have been falling for he was he was reacting to things that he didn't need to react to and all of that again it's taxing the only reason he clearly didn't worry about it as much is because Pulev's not really a puncher and he wasn't fast enough to be able to execute some of the traps that he was setting there was several times where he had Joshua in perfect position to unload a shot and he hesitated because he probably didn't think he was quick enough to get there and then ended up just trying to jump into a clinch and then hit with rabbit punches behind the back of the head so that's ultimately how I see both guys being able to win the fight. But my prediction is that the guy with the better boxing skill, the better IQ, the better movement, and obviously the orthodox, the unorthodox angles coming from, you know, a style and a position and a stance that you're not necessarily used to dealing with with only 43 amateur fights and what 23 pro fights I see Usyk winning this fight round 10 or round 11 
by way of stoppage. Maybe not necessarily a straight knockout, but a TKO of some form. I can see possibly him even having to come off the deck to do it. And I can see AJ hitting the deck as well at some point in this fight, similar to the Klitschko one. But I think mentally, he's just a bit stronger than AJ. All of his title fights, all of his successes as an amateur and as a pro have all come away from home. 2012 Olympics in London. Fight against, who was it, um, Glavatsky to get his first title in Cruiserweight in Poland. Latvia, Marius Bredas to unify. Russia, Murat Gassiev. UK again, Tony Bellew. He defended his title in America against Michael Hunter. Like he's he's a road warrior. He's comfortable fighting anywhere. And we've already seen just by virtue of the Andy Ruiz first fight that Joshua doesn't seem to do as well when he doesn't have his home comforts. Now that may not be a total truth. But based on what we've seen, he's had pretty much everything his own way. The one time he wasn't around his usual comforts, for whatever reason, he came unstuck. Even quote-unquote the Saudi Arabia fight was still his comforts. It was his promotion. It was his people. They built the stadium for him. It was like everything was strictly around him again. So, yeah, he's going to have his comforts here, but against someone who's mentally dealt with always being in the other guy's backyard, always enjoying the hostile crowd, not letting it bother them. You know, Ukraine and Russia was in the height of a madness, basically, when he and Gassia fought and he still went to Russia, beat a guy convincingly in his backyard it's hard for me to see this any other way than the Usyk TKO victory rounds 10 or round 11 no I could be hella wrong but it's um it's not often that I am however if I am wrong on this one I would actually be happy that I was wrong but that's my prediction so anyway like and subscribe, leave yours in the comments and we've probably now got less than 18 hours before we find out what the truth is. I'm looking forward to it. Catch you on the next one.